The spectacular coastline of Western Victoria is world famous for its scenic beauty, secluded beaches and pristine waters. These pristine waters support a wonderful and diverse range of marine and bird life. Of the seafood delicacies which abound in these waters, none is more highly prized than abalone. Each year, some two to three hundred tonnes of these marine mollusks are harvested from Victoria's west coast for export to the fine dining tables of the world. The harvest is conducted under the most stringent of fishery licensing conditions under the control of Fisheries Victoria, the state government's fishery management arm. The Western Zone Abalone Resource is accessed via 14 Abalone Access Licences, each allowing a diver to collect 20 quota units of abalone from the seafloor each year. The Western Zone extends from the Victorian South Australian border in the west to the Hopkins River mouth at Warrnambool to the east. The natural forces that continue to sculpt this spectacular coastline make this abalone management zone the most dangerous and weather dependent for divers engaged in the harvest. The benefit however is a prolific abalone resource which abounds in such turbulent yet pristine waters. For management purposes, the abalone fishing zone is divided into 36 reef codes. These range from rugged headlands to more sheltered bays, rocky lagoons and even offshore islands. The Western Abalone Divers Association, or WADA, has been in existence for over 20 years and seeks to represent the interests of divers and access licence owners in the zone. The association includes many members who pioneered development of the fishery in Australia. One such pioneer was still diving at 70 years of age and even now remains active as a deckhand for the next generation of divers. WADA has developed a reputation for putting the interests of the resource first and most recently has been at the forefront of cooperative resource management in Victoria. Only recently have marine biologists begun to discover the true nature of abalone behaviour and reproduction. Once thought to be a single population, it is now understood that abalone in fact exist as multiple, diverse and generally independent communities. 
WADA members were quick to realise the importance of this revelation and that the traditional management approach of zone-wide minimum lengths and broad quotas could not guarantee the sustainability of the resource. Worse still, it was realised that such large-scale management could actually accelerate decline through a process known as serial depletion. Internationally recognised marine biologist and abalone expert, Dr Jeremy Prince explains further. If abalone was just a classic fish the way the textbook write about fish, we should have solved all our problems then and we shouldn't have to worry. But what happens with abalone is this, this small scale variability so that you actually have many different populations and some have a large size of maturity and some have a small size of maturity. And so that you apply a regional catch limit or a regional size limit, which we do, and basically populations with a large size of maturity, they mature above the legal limit, um, still get overexploited. They're, they're the favoured areas to fish because you can do good catch rates and so we focus the pressure on those and those go, those go down. And so bit by bit we have this serial depletion going on with local populations being lost until finally what's left, the population that are left can't sustain the, the catches that were once sustainable. And then you have the snowball going downhill effect. I started seeing this variability through my research and then when I swam the many reefs you swim as a commercial diver, you just see the, the trend that the, the reefs with clean, large, flat shells, which are newly matured animals, they're the ones in decline. And the, the, the stunty, round, fouled, old shell, where the breeders are spending many years underneath the legal size limit, the, they end up being the only reefs you have left. And you know they were once the reefs we preferred to stay away from, but eventually they become the only reefs we have left. And then you talk to divers and you invariably you find that the areas that they're worried about the catch is these clean, flat, young, immature animals and they're basically being caught before they can even breed. And sure enough, the reefs that are the backbone of the fishery now always have the same characteristic. It's an old shell, it's old breeders that are still below the legal measure. The challenge with abalone is really trying to move management down to a scale well below the scale that, that government can cope with. We're talking scales of hundreds of metres. And, and that's the exciting bit, the commitment over three, four years now of, of the group here to, to follow that path on down. So when three years ago we started confronting the need to, to talk about reef code LMLs, legal lengths for, at the scale of reef codes over kilometres, everyone was shaking their head and scratching their heads and saying we can't do it. And that was the divers, let alone the, the managers, the government people. And now three years later, here we are, uh, talking about how we have uh, multiple legal lengths inside uh, or minimum length inside a reef code. So the, the idea that's come out of these last couple of days of, of actually mapping in detail uh, areas that are only square kilometres and then within those, you know, on scales of hundreds of metres having uh, codes of conduct so people are leaving large breeders in one area while they're accessing small breeders in another area. It's, it's, for me, it's the most exciting piece of work that I do. I, I don't do anything this exciting anywhere else. I'm involved right around the Pacific Rim, abalone fisheries, deep water fisheries, shark fisheries, and just the, the example these guys are setting. Uh, the challenge with abalone is really trying to move management down to a scale well below the scale that, that government can cope with. We're talking scales of hundreds of metres. Cooperative management has evolved in the western abalone zone from a grassroots level. Fishermen came to the realisation that their desires for responsible stewardship could only be fulfilled through a true team approach. This meant open and honest dialogue which sought to embrace the scientific community and the state's fisheries managers alike. Through goodwill and perseverance, relationships of mutual trust and respect have been established which today make the Western Abalone fishery a shining example of cooperative resource management in action. The principle of fine scale management includes the need to manage abalone production from each individual reef code as a farmer would manage various paddocks within his farm. This has been a revolutionary concept for abalone production in Victoria. Traditionally outputs have been set as a total allowable catch for the zone. 
Now, however, through Wada's initiative and foresight, each of the Western Zone's 36 reef codes have quota reference points, which are set annually and are constantly monitored through a cooperative memorandum of understanding. As a result of Wada's initiative, combined with support and cooperation of Fisheries Victoria, the abalone harvest from the Western Zone is now responsibly and intelligently distributed across all productive reefs. On the 6th of October 2004, this spirit of cooperation was further demonstrated through a major exploratory fishing effort within the Julia Bank Reef Code near Portland. Under the direction of the Victorian fisheries research arm, Pervic, all available access licence divers descended on Portland along with a major support contribution from fisheries enforcement personnel and researchers. Using a predetermined grid system, divers were allocated search areas to explore. The meticulous detail of the project enabled each abalone caught to be recorded through sophisticated measurement and GPS recording equipment. In a true spirit of cooperation, the catch was pooled at the end of the day and equally divided between the participants for quota allocation purposes. The operation was the largest cooperative research project of its type ever undertaken in Australia. A major outcome of the project is the likely creation of a viable greenlip abalone fishery based around this newly explored Julia Bank resource. The historic village of Port Ferry is home to one of Australia's largest abalone processing and exporting facilities, Sowet Seafoods. From modest beginnings as a diver cooperative, Sowest Seafoods has become a market leader in its field. Now a major employer, the Port Ferry facility incorporates state-of-the-art technology to ensure an uncompromising approach to quality and presentation. Sour West was first formed in 1980 by a group of licensed abalone divers to process and market black lip abalone from the region and over the years the company has grown to also uh, can abalone, live exports and also get involved in aquaculture products. Southwest exports around 400 tonnes of abalone each year to markets including China, Hong Kong and Japan. Southwest leadership in the field includes development of an award-winning clear can technology. In a competitive international marketplace, the clear can ensures complete consumer confidence in the Southwest product. The benefits of cooperative resource management are being recognised in fisheries the world over. Sadly, the theory is more often talked about than actually applied. In Victoria's Western Zone abalone fishery, however, it is the fishermen themselves who have taken the lead. With the support and cooperation of fishery managers, enforcement personnel and researchers, these farmers of the sea are striving to ensure the sustainable utilisation of the Western Zone abalone resource for this and for future generations. Here I come to the rescue, here I come. I was out there playing hard 
my big attitude and my broken heart poison my only friend my drinking addiction to the rescue that you were to my rescue that you were